What was Samson ever doing going down there? We left him, lonely, heroic figure, following that lonely lifestyle as a judge in Israel, choosing to live apart from his people and there with the sacrifice of that for their safety in the cave in the rock at Etam. He's set apart, distinctive, heroic figure, stuck up there, ruling and judging for Israel, sacrificing his own aspirations to relationship, maybe to family, for the sake of God and for the sake of God's people. So what is he doing at God? All sorts of guesses get made in the commentaries. But they're guesses. This is a risky place for him to go. I mean, at all sorts of levels, it's a risky place for him to go. But hard, hard to believe that none of the Philistines living at Gaza would realise this is Samson, the scourge of the Philistines. Let's do him in! In fact, he gets recognised at the start of verse 2. Maybe he just walked in there like the lawman in the cowboy towns in the westerns, you know? Every eye fixed on his back as he strides down the gunman's sidewalk, you know? Down the middle of the street. No one brave enough to challenge this phenomenal, awe-inspiring individual. Maybe. We don't know. Who knows? He could surely have had very little business being where he was, and he certainly wasn't going to be spreading peace and love by his being there. And verse 1 tells us, with the least compunction possible, what it is that he goes there for. What did he get up to? He saw a prostitute there, so he went in to spend the night with her there. The Bible has got absolutely no hesitation exposing the flaws of its heroes. Have you noticed that? The contemporary church covers up the faults of its heroes. The Bible brings sinful conduct to light. It is God who is perfect, not his people. That's what the Bible teaches. If there were no Jesus Christ, no cross on Calvary, no cry of dereliction and no resurrection, no grace of God for sinners, coming in hundreds of years to come, that it simply couldn't have been so that the Bible would expose the sins of people like this. But the whole point is that God is in the business of dealing with sinners. And saving them by his own blood. Shed on the cross. And therefore he also graciously uses the most sinful of people to our eyes to serve his purposes. And there'd be none of us of any use to him if he didn't. So when you get commentators queuing up to criticise Simpson and tut tut about his behaviour, mm -hmm. think on. Deny him. Now, of course, that's no excuse for Samson and what he does. We are still, every one of us, depending on that mercy, still fully responsible for our waywardness and sin. And Samson shows off plenty of waywardness and sin here. What does he do? He goes down to Gaza where he shouldn't have gone, and in that seaside town, funny enough, he finds himself a prostitute, just like that. Just as Israel herself has developed a lust for things Philistine, Samson also identifies with their error. In fact, he has a bit of a record for identifying with their error, for showing his strong taste for things Philistine, particularly for Philistine women. The forbidden fruit appears to be the sweetest. First there was the woman in Timnah, which led to shed loads of trouble way back when. Foxes, tails tied together, corn. Yeah? And then, um, <clears throat> what was it? 30 garments, wasn't it? 30 sets of garments. Now there's this prostitute in Gaza. Later there's going to be Delilah. Semitic name, but the details of the narrative certainly seem to suggest she's a Philistine woman. And he goes to this place, and he gets entangled in this mess, and then he gets rumbled. Philistines think, whoa, Samson's here, we love him. And they lay in wait.